Hey guys, it's Kate. I am going to do a art page that hopefully is kind of fast. And I have three colors here that I'm going to use to make the background. So I am using craft paints today and I have these from Apple Barrel. I've got Territorial Beige, Cameo Pink, and White. And so I chose them so they'd be kind of light colored once I mix them. And I'm just going to kind of put them on the page willy-nilly to make a background for some something <laughs> on top. And I kind of like to sort of fly by the seat of my pants with some of this stuff because that's where you can get sometimes some pretty creative things going on. So I'm just going to drop some paint and spread it around and see where that takes us. My brush is just slightly damp so I'm just gonna move around here and start bringing it in. I'm using um, a watercolor paper from a pretty inexpensive pad actually I'm just using it up at this point but it is this and it's the essentials. I think the whole thing is under five dollars. It's watercolor but it's only 119 pounds and it is cellulose paper so doesn't really do wonderful with the watercolor but I will say that when you're looking for certain effects I don't know you have the arches paper which is sort of your gold standard and paper like that I know there's several other brands that people really like too but sometimes uh, that sort of blossoming effect that you get with some of the more inexpensive watercolor brands of paper can be what you actually want and so they're not bad to have on hand and they're pretty good to practice on too just don't expect um, to get results that are you know like you might see on videos um, by professional artists so it's a pretty thirsty paper and I probably should have gessoed but I'm just using craft paint today so this is kind of just it's going to act like its own surface <laughs> and so I'm just getting some coverage on everything I really want the overall color of this background to be pretty light more like this but I'm going to try to get kind of a blend so I have different colors going on and some visual interest. But it is going to be pretty white. And some of this paper texture, I don't mind that coming through either. So I'm going to do the tan and the white. And then I'm going to come in with some of that cameo pink and blend that in a bit too but for now I just want to get this paper covered and then I can have kind of a nice surface to start working with and so just going around with my brush making sure to get any areas that look like they need some coverage particularly around the edges and I know a lot of people like to tape down their edges and I do too sometimes but for things like this I'll just grab a corner with my finger because this is drying pretty quickly and I work on a glass palette and I have another glass palette next to this for my actual paint mixing so I don't have to worry about ruining any surfaces and I can just paint right onto it so that's kind of nice I actually got this it was a steal on clearance at Hobby Lobby I don't know what they're doing right now but I went there the other day and they just have so many things marked down I don't know if they're getting ready to do a product change or something like that but they just had all sorts of things and you know when you're looking sometimes things just kind of end up in your cart even if you don't really intend for that. <laughs> I really like this cameo pink. It's sort of light, not too in your face, but I really like these little pops of almost graphic color. 
and it can still be smooth and overall the value here is pretty light so I can come in with some darker colors and I think that helps me out a lot when I'm working on something and you know sometimes you can get kind of carried away <laughs> and just you're sort of willy-nilly with everything but I like either starting off with very dark colors or starting off with very light colors and then working my way into the opposite direction as I add layers to it. So I like how this is kind of going right now. I meant to actually <laughs> add white there, so I need to pay more attention. I grabbed the wrong bottle and I'm wondering why there's no change in the color. <laughs> oh, the joys of art. So I'm just getting this blended in a little bit more and I have some of the beige kind of peeking through, but not a ton. It's just very light all the way through. And so I've got all my, and I haven't cleaned my brush at all either. I'm just letting it kind of blend all together. This is covered so, and actually kind of coming back over with some of that leftover beige. I like that um, little bit of texture that kind of comes up from the paper when you use the side of the brush because I still have some paint in there from before. So that's kind of neat. And that is pretty, it almost looks like basket weaving or something. <laughs> So I'll close these up for the moment and I'm going to rinse out my brush because I'm not exactly sure what I want to do yet. So I'm sitting here looking at this paper while it kind of dries for a minute. And I have a pretty good layer of paint on there. So you know what, I'm going to pause this for now and let this dry. And then I'm going to kind of think about what I want to do next and I will be right back. Okay, I am back and the paper is dry. It is a little bit, I don't know, it feels almost humid underneath, but it's dry enough for what I want to do next. And while it was drying, I was kind of playing around with some ideas and I think what I'm going to do is, um, so I had this dirty paper towel <laughs> laying next to me and I was playing around with colors that I thought might go well on top of this. So I took my cameo pink because I, I wanted to have this mixed into whatever color is on top to have sort of a mother color so it hopefully looks more cohesive. So I've got this Tuscan teal, I've got yellow and the cameo pink. So this one right here is the plain Tuscan teal. This one here is the teal and the pink mixed together. And this is almost like, um, like a Wedgwood blue, which I really like, but I wanted something with a little bit more warmth to it. And so I settled on this and this is Tuscan teal, cameo pink, and a little bit of yellow. And so I mixed them all together and came up with that. And I think I'm going to use this on top, but I'm also going to do, I'm going to do some here and brush it on a wet mixture. And then I'm going to blot it off with paper towel. So it doesn't, it's not like super strong in your face. So over here to the side on my mixing palette, I am going to add these three colors. So I've got some teal here. I'm going to add some yellow and some of that pink. And then I'm going to mix it together and see how it looks. And I think this is looking pretty good. It's actually a little bit lighter than what I want but pretty close. So here's a comparison to what I just mixed. So I'm going to add a little bit more 
of the Tuscan teal to darken it up a bit and give it, bring it a little more toward blue than just green. <laughs> and I'm actually really liking this color. I'm getting closer, so we're getting there. I'm going to add a little bit more. Because I really love that Tuscan blue. It's almost like a like a turquoise, which is one of my favorites. So I think that's pretty close because it'll darken a little bit as it dries too. So I am going to take my spray bottle with just plain water and I'm going to, hey, some of my cat somehow got on here. <laughs> I'm going to spray just a couple of sprays to moisten up the paper a bit so that the it doesn't just soak up this paint even though it has um, paint on it. It's matte and it is just very dry feeling. So I'm kind of going for, hey, this could be like a field because I am going to doodle some flowers. I'm also going to kind of spread a little bit up here too, but not much. Okay, so hopefully this works out okay. I'm going to add a little bit more water and I'm going to start blotting some of this back. And it is still a little bit dark, but that's okay. I'll just keep adding water and get this. There we go. And there I've got some. It's starting to come up a bit now. Should have had a lighter touch with the paint. So then what I can do, since that is definitely <laughs> darker than I wanted. I'm going to come back in with the pink and my brush and do some blending. So everything is always fixable and it's kind of nice to have this trial and error. There's no editing here <laughs> on this video and so we can always come in and go over it. And actually, I like that a lot. And that blends even more. So I'm going to add some more pink here. Layers are wonderful. And I'm just going to go back and forth. I want this is kind of what I was going for, this sort of uneven, but just a hint of what could be a field. And so when in doubt, knock it out. <laughs> just knock it back a little bit. Okay, I'm going to add just a little bit more white here. And then I think we're pretty good on our background. See? That looks much better now and I have my green. Okay, excellent. So I'm going to let this dry one more time and then I'm going to come back in 
and get to putting in some elements here. I'll see you soon. Okay, we are not quite dry, but we're pretty close and I am going to do some quick stencils. So I grabbed these and I am going to use one along the top and one along the bottom. So I mixed up some more green, but a bit lighter and I have it on my brush, but I'm going to blot a lot of it off. So I have not too much, whoops, not too much on my brush as you can see there. So I'm going to see how that looks on my stencil. So I've got these circles, they start larger at the bottom and then they get smaller as you go up and I'm not going to make it too uniform. I'm just going to put this down and start adding some interest and some texture and it'll kind of bring this more together. And so I'm just going to go over this lightly. I want to go somewhat to the end of the page on some of these circles, but not all of them. And so you can see a little bit of texture going on there. And I'm going to come in here some more and do the same thing and go in some different areas. And go higher on some and lower on some and see how that looks. Okay, I like that. That looks pretty good to me. Mix up some more of this blue and green and then keep on going. And make sure to get, I don't want it to be like where they all kind of end at the same spot, you know? So, and I don't want the sides to have the same spots. So I'm just going to kind of go in here lightly and scatter it around, make sure I get some spots way up top like that. Now it's still, you can see kind of the end of the stencil when you go out. So what I'll do is just put a couple of little things there, but that's a little bit too wet. So hang on, let me blot some of that off. Okay, there we go. And then maybe just a couple right there and that'll do just fine. Perfect. Okay, so next I'm going to do these bubbles and I'm going to come in from the top and now these are just all different sizes. So I will just um, let these overlap just a little bit. Now I am going to stay kind of light with these because I'm going to be drawing some flowers and I want those to be more in the front with the darker color. So I've got some mid-tones going on here. I've got my highlights. I'm going to do a little bit of a color here but not too dark and I don't want it to really take away. So I am going to actually I think I'm going to add some of this white and just make a very light color. So I'll have some texture and some interest there, but it's not going to be overpowering. At least hopefully not. I'm <laughs> you never know sometimes till it gets on the page, but that's why we have trial and error, isn't it? So. I'm just mixing up almost like a, like a minty, or actually not even mint. It's pretty light. I like it though. It's a very, very light green. I'm going to wipe some of that off. I've got some moisture on my brush. So, and just again, just with the tip of it, and I'm going to come in here and just go lightly over these bubbles 
and I'm going to go in a couple of different directions so that you can get that hint of circle but I'm not even you know going overboard with making sure they're all filled in so I wanted this to overlap just a tad and I'm going to make sure I'm getting up here and down into my painting a bit and just going over it lightly same over here oops let me see okay looks like it was right there and I'm going to come all the way down on this one and also add a little bit right there and so it looks like I've got a little bit of a gap here I'll add just a couple little circles there and maybe just bring it down with a couple of little ones here the edge a little bit and I've got sort of some big ones here by accident so I will come in here and add just a couple of little small ones There's something about hearing a paintbrush go into the jar to get clean. <laughs> That's pretty nice. Okay. All right, I will get those cleaned. And here is where we are so far. Man, when I do these voice on the videos, then like live time, oh my gosh, this is probably going to be a long video but hey you know I spend time doing this stuff so I'm just having fun with you hopefully you know you're enjoying you're enjoying this too okay so I've got I think I'm pretty good on this background now I really want to get that contrast pop and so when we come back I'm going to let this dry a little more and I think I'm going to uh, either hit this with some markers or go with the old black and white. I may just do some doodles on this. Actually, I think I will because I'll be able to do some, some nice black and white, which I really like. So I definitely have some doodle plans with this. Just have to pick my tools. So I'll be back as soon as this dries. See you in a minute. Okay, folks, I think I have an idea what I'm going to do. And it's going to be a little bit of collage, a little spray of this bad boy, Dilutions Ink Spray, and a little bit of doodling with a marker. So, I found this butterfly, and he's missing a little wingtip, but I think I can just sort of tuck it right behind here, or something like that. I also had these little paper strips um, from some collage paper I had. Uh, by the way, if you're looking for paper, just random like patterns, florals, textures, colors, go to the Dollar Tree, $1.25, you get a whole pack of this stuff and it's all mixed. Anyway, so I'm going to set this aside right now and I think first um, I know I kind of want to put my butterfly in this area so I want something over here too so I'm going to use this and make some leafy vines and this is like a turquoise color it's a fine point permanent marker and I got it in a set at Walmart actually when I made my um, alcohol inks and this is just an extra part of the set 
So I think what I'm going to do is just go top to bottom and make a line. And make some leaves like that. And it won't go it won't be too dark for the paper and the color kind of goes I think I like that it's having a little bit of trouble on the paint so I'm just going over the lines a couple of times and that works out just fine. And then maybe this one I'll have come down like this. And I'll start this one a little bit lower. And I just want um, a hint of these leaves. Actually, I'm going to put a little tip of one here to kind of give the hint that it's still going. Okay, good. And then I'll come up here. And then I'll put one right here coming off the end and then maybe another one and I'll start it right about there and go all the way down into my grass and do the same thing I think I like this Okay, and then I'll do a little one right here. Nice. Okay, now do I want lines down the middle of these or no I think maybe I think this is good so I'll add a little one here maybe come up a little bit more yeah that works okay so now I am going to give my butterfly a home and I'm just going to do one spray right here in the middle. I'm going to dab that with the paper towel and get rid of the excess like that. Now, now he's got a home. So I'm gonna get my matte medium right here and put this aside. I'm thinking, actually, <laughs> one thing at a time. Okay, get a little bit on my palette and get my brush. So I think I want to stagger these a little bit, kind of like I did with the vines. And maybe we can do something like, well, let me see. What do you think of that? But then it's right up against this. I don't think I want that. So maybe maybe here a 
What do you think? Or like that. It's all just, I don't know, it's too many choices. We'll just go with this. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to get my matte medium, do a swipe here, and start with the first one. Here. I think that'll work out nicely. Okay, so then here. one okay maybe hmm, I kind of like that right there Maybe up here. We'll do that. This is wanting to move. So let me just get this restuck down a little bit. There we go. There. Okay, now I'm just going to put a little dollop of that right on the page. And we'll put this right like that. Yeah. Now, this butterfly I actually printed from an old postcard I had. So this is from my inkjet printer. But I like to collect older postcards and they're out of copyright, they're fine to use. At least check your area um, where I am and I, I do tend to look for um, non-copyrighted images if I'm going to use it in something like this, if it's an antique image. Um, obviously, your market may vary, <laughs> so just double check before you're using images, but a lot of times older images over a hundred years old or so, depending on the publisher and everything else, um, they may likely be out of copyright but copyright law is so complicated I don't think the lawyers even understand it so <laughs> I think I'm gonna do one more little spray and get some on that butterfly too there we go give it a little bit more of that color overlay and kinda tone the butterfly as well all right I think I like how that's turned out now let me add just a few little pops with the fine liner I'm gonna outline some of these blocks not too not too worried about broken lines or scribbly lines just want to give it a little bit of something to separate it from the background. Okay. 
actually. Here. I have this ultra fine, and I actually have never used this before. It's painters and it's permanent um, acrylic paint marker or opaque paint marker, I should say. And so let's see how this works. Okay. Oh, boy, that's really nice. <laughs> that just comes right out, doesn't it? Okay. And then I might give my butterfly a little outline. some attention there. Let me press on this marker some more, get some that paint coming out. Okay, I feel like I need a little something over here, so I think I'll do some of my dots. And have them just lead in to the butterfly a little bit. And just kind of come down here to that area there. And maybe trail off. What do you think? Well, I think this is going to be done. I mean, if, if I wanted to I could just keep doing stuff on this all day <laughs> but I have to stop and decide that it's time to stop so I appreciate the time that you've taken with me today and I hope you've enjoyed this video um, let me know in the comments if you you know see a few of the videos that I put up I've got some with uh, voiceovers that go a lot faster than this did <laughs> this is like definitely real time um, or I can talk while I'm doing something and we can spend more time together. So let me know what your thoughts are and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, keep creating! <laughs>